this is a picture for the tonsil. Uh, the tonsil is characterized by having a covering of the mucous membrane lining the, the um, oral cavity, which is formed of non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. This epithelium actually dips into this crypt and lines also this uh, crypt. But it has on the other side incomplete capsule, not evident here in this picture. So, from one side we have the non-keratinized stratified squamous and at the base you will have the incomplete capsule. The tonsil is formed of lymphatic nodules and in between the lymphatic nodules we have the uh, scattered or diffused lymphatic tissue formed of uh, the same three elements in the germinal centers in the lymph node. Uh, or in the uh, spleen, the lymphocyte, the plasma cell, and the macrophage. The lymphatic nodules here may have germinal center like this picture or uh, not. And they are arranged around the crypts. The lymphatic nodules here are arranged around the crypts. Here we have lymphatic nodules with germinal center. In this is the non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, and this is the tonsillar crypt, and these are the lymphatic nodules arranged around this crypt. In between them, we have diffuse lymphatic tissue formed of lymphocytes, plasma cells, and macrophage. Uh, this is a very nice picture for the structure of the tonsil. You can see here the a non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium here, non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, and it is uh, passing through the crypt and covering it or lining it. And we have the, diff the lymphatic follicles around the crypt, and in between, we have the diffuse lymphatic tissue. Uh, here on the other side of the tonsil facing this epithelium you have this uh, capsule this is a capsule it is not complete it is uh, present only at uh, uh, one part of the tonsil here we have the capsule and on the other side we have the non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium very important structure here is this these are the mucous glands these mucous glands are very characteristic for the tonsil, but don't forget that uh, in this uh, uh, palatine tonsil, these mucous glands do not open inside the crypt so that the crypt is not washed and it is a common site for the infection. Also, don't forget that some of the lymphocytes can penetrate this epithelium and uh, appear in the saliva and they are called salivary corpuscles. Salivary corpuscles. Now we will start the trial exam. Here the yellow triangle here. The yellow triangle uh, points to the uh, red line so it is the capsule the black arrow points to the white space so it is the subcapsular lymphatic sinus the letter a points to the cortical lymph follicle and actually it is a secondary follicle because it has a pale germinal center uh, the red star uh, points to this area which is the medulla the blue arrow points to the germinal center here so uh, uh, try to read all the question to find out uh, uh, that uh, this is a follicle and this is a germinal center highly specified but here is a letter for the whole structure another picture uh, showing this uh, red arrow the red arrow is pointing to this lymph follicle and maybe to the germinal center so it is better to mention uh, the red arrow is pointing to the secondary follicle with a germinal center. Secondary lymph follicle in the cortex with a germinal center. 
Here the yellow arrow points to the hilum. This is the concave area of the lymph node, and this is the hilum, this is the cortex, and this is the hilum showing the blood vessels and the efferent lymph vessel carrying the filtered lymph. Here the lymphatic efferent lymph vessel, here uh, carrying the filtered lymph. The green star here points to the area of the medulla. Uh, the blue triangle points to the capsule. The black arrow to the subcapsular sinus. The black arrow head here to the white area, so it is the trabecular sinus. The yellow arrow to the red line, so it is the trabeculum. The uh, uh, the letter A here points to the medullary lymphatic cord, while the letter B it is the area in between these cords and it is uh, very wide, not red, so it is the medullary lymphatic sinus. Uh, this is the uh, lymph node. Why it is the lymph node? Because I can see the follicles here at the uh, periphery uh, and inside or in the medulla I have these spicules or these cords or these ropes here so it is the follicle on the surface of course inside so it is the lymph node the area one the area one is the area of the cortex the area two it is the area between the cortex and the medulla or the deep part of the cortex so it is a paracortical zone containing T lymphocytes coming from the thymus through the post capillary venules the area three it is the area of the medulla Number four structures, these are the medullary cords. Uh, number five, these are the lymphatic follicles with germinal center in this area and in this area and in this area. Uh, number six here, of course, it is the capsule of the lymph node. Uh, again, we have here the number one is the area, this area is the cortex. Number two, the paracortex or the thymus dependent zone number three is the medulla number four the medullary cords number five here we have the cortical follicles number six here we have the capsule number seven white area so it is the uh, number seven here it is a white area it is the subcapsular sinus number eight it is the, the uh, trabecular sinus or cortical sinus here not under the capsule so a trabecular sinus or a cortical sinus you can mention cortical sinus number nine it is the area in between the cords and the uh, between the cords and the trabecular so it is the medullary sinus this section is for the spleen because it has the uh, scattered follicles uh, and the follicles, if you look at them, you can uh, diagnose uh, that they have follicular arteriole here, uh, here, so it is the spleen. Uh, number one, it is the uh, white pulp or the lymph follicle. Number two, it is the area between the pulp, so it is the, between the follicles, so it is the red pulp. Number three, it is the capsule, very thick. Number four, uh, it is a trabeculum here, red, and it uh, uh, it is not necessarily coming from the under surface of the capsule. Mainly comes from the hilum. It is connective tissue, redly red stained. Here we have also the spleen because I have this white pulp with the follicular arteriole. So we will start by labeling. Number one is the germinal center. Don't forget the cells. Number two is the follicular zone. Number three is the marginal zone. Don't forget it has T and B lymphocytes. Number four, we have the periarteriolar lymphatic cheese surrounding the follicular arteriole number five. Uh, don't forget the cells present in the PALS, which is the T lymphocytes, and it is the thymus-dependent zone. Uh, also, we have the 
uh, area with cells, all types of cells of blood. Uh, in addition to the macrophage, we have the uh, red bulb. And we have the uh, connective tissue trabeculum here, number 7. Picture for the spleen because I have the white bulb with the follicular arteriole. Uh, it is uh, here we have the yellow arrow for the capsule, the red triangular for the white bulb showing this lymphatic follicle with the germinal center, the uh, blue arrow for this connective tissue trabeculum here, all of these are trabeculi, and the green star for the area in between the white bulbs and trabeculi it is the red bulb. This is the picture of the Simons because I have in this picture the incomplete septa uh, dividing the gland into lobes and lobules. Uh, here we have the medulla is continuous between different lo lobules because we have uh, incomplete septa. Here we have the periphery which is dark cortex formed of uh, the T lymphoblast and T lymphocytes condensed together but in the medulla we have a paler appearance because the lymphocytes are separated by the epicellular reticular cells and the macrophage here we have the uh, this uh, blue this black arrow points to the capsule and this is for the green for the trabeculum and this is the uh, yellow star for the simus medulla and the uh, red triangle points to one of the cymic lobules because I have two main lobes and these are the lobules. Again, this is a picture for the cymus and you see here the cymic lobules. Incomplete septa, number five. Number one is the, all of this, it is the cymic lobule. Number two is the area cortex. Number three, it is the medulla. Number four, it is the outer covering capsule. Number five, is the incomplete trabeculae here. This is a picture for the thymus because I have in this picture the acidophilic hyaline mass uh, uh, developed by the hyaline degeneration of the epithelial reticular cells present in the thymic medulla. And this is the concentric layers of the epithelial reticular cells uh, they are oval cells with oval nuclei and the nuclei here are pale with prominent nucleolus uh, and these are the lymphocytes so the structure surrounded by the circle is called the hustle corpuscle the yellow star points to the degenerated material that undergo uh, uh, hyaline degeneration and the red uh, arrow points to the epithelial reticular cells forming concentric layers having the same center. This picture is different from the previous uh, pictures because it has the non-carotenized stratified squamous, it has a crypt lined by this uh, non-carotenized stratified squamous, it has on either side of the crypt the lymphatic follicles and in between the follicles we have the scattered or diffuse lymphoid tissue and here we have the red area on the other side uh, opposing the uh, epithelium it is the incomplete capsule so it is a palatine tonsil showing number one lymphoid follicles number two diffuse lymphatic tissue number three it is the crypt number four it is the epithelium non creatinized stratified squamous lining the oral cavity and here we have the hemi capsule of the tonsil or the incomplete capsule. Uh, don't forget that uh, uh, we have, we should have here mucus glands, but they are not evident in this picture. But uh, look for their picture in the uh, data show of the lymphatic tissue. Also, this picture for the palatine tonsil. We can see the epithelium here, non creatinized stratified squamous, uh, and this is the crypt. And on either side of the crypt, we have the lymphatic follicles with germinal center here, and with the diffuse or the scattered uh, lymphatic tissue. 
this is all but we don't have in this picture also we don't have uh, the mucus glands or the capsule this is a very nice picture for the uh, palatine tonsil it shows all the structure of the palatine tonsil, tonsil almost uh, we have uh, the uh, non creatinized stratified squamous uh, covering the tonsil and lining the crypt we have the crypt we have uh, the lymphatic follicles on either side of the crypt and we have here a very important structure which are the mucus glands pale stained because the mucus dissolves during preparation of the section and don't forget that the glands do not open in the crypt so accumulation of material and bacteria takes place and not washed out so infection takes place almost always in these uh, uh, crypts. A condition called tonsillitis.